you should. It's good. It's it's uh, it's only t- twelve minutes or something like that. So it's and it's gonna be at least two questions next time from it. Mm, yes, I can do that. Uh, I'll put it under uh, the slides for the week. I have to find it first. I guess. Was it really necessary to keep it a secret? Yeah. 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 I want to talk to you about yes, what we can learn from studying the genomes of living people and extinct humans. But before doing that, I just briefly want to remind you about what you already know, that our genomes are genetic material are stored in almost all cells in our bodies and chromosomes in the form of DNA, which is this famous double helical molecule. And the genetic information is contained in the form of the sequence of four bases, abbreviated with the letters A, T, C, and E. And the information is there twice, one on each strand, which is important because when new cells are formed, these strands come apart, new strands are synthesized with the old ones as templates in an almost perfect process. But nothing, of course, in nature is totally perfect, so sometimes an error is made, and a wrong letter is built in. And we can then see the result of such mutations when we compare DNA sequences among us here in the room. That part is at the end. So we can then ask for Denisovans, other forms of humans too, that Neanderthals and Denisovans, at least sometimes <laughs> in the past, <laughs> then humans emerged somewhere in Africa, came out of Africa, <laughs> presumably in the Middle East, they meet Neanderthals, mixed with them, continue to spread over the world, and somewhere in Southeast Asia, they meet Denisovans, mixed with them, and continue on out into the Pacific. And then these earlier forms of humans disappear, but they live on a little bit today in some of us, in that people outside Africa have two and a half percent of their DNA from Neanderthals, and people in Melanesia actually have an additional five percent approximately from the Denisovans. Does this then mean that there is, after all, some absolute difference between the people outside Africa and inside Africa, in that people outside Africa have this old component in their genome from these extinct forms of humans, whereas Africans do not? Well, I don't think that is the case. Presumably, modern humans emerged somewhere in Africa. They spread across Africa also, of course, and there were older, earlier forms of humans there, and since we mixed elsewhere, I'm pretty sure that one day, when we will perhaps have a genome of also these earlier forms in Africa, we will find that they have also mixed with early modern humans in Africa. So, to sum up, what have we learned from studying genomes of present-day humans and extinct humans? We have learned perhaps many things, but I, one thing that I find sort of important to mention is that I think the lesson is that we're always mixed. We're mixed with these earlier forms of humans wherever we met them, and we're mixed with each other ever since. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so that, you have, that's your homework. You can watch this tomorrow or tonight. Instead of watching something on Netflix or... <laughs> Anyway, he's uh, he's actually, he's actually a really really good speaker. So it's it's uh, yes, uh, and and now it's it's uh, in the um, it's uh, the link is on the on the page. Um, I think to so, so something else we should mention from the more than all that we always mixed. Something else you want to mention from the phylogeny part? 
you remember what a tree is, what the under the tree and what the... Do you remember what autologs and paralogs are? What is an autolog? Related from uh, common ancestors through speciation. Okay, so genes that are related by speciation, yes. <coughs> and a paralog? Exactly. Uh, what else was important? We have. Um, well, you will. Did you, uh, you, you all did the, the dinosaur lab yesterday or this morning? So, did you figure out what it was that dinosaurs' closest relatives are? Monkeys. Yeah, exactly. That's we know that. That's that's a sensation. Why not a lizard? Why not lizard? What do you think? Why, why wasn't it lizard? So, who who thought that the, the monkeys and the dinosaurs are closest relatives? Yeah, but do you think that's correct? Well, it's, it's, when we're reading the paper, it says it's a bone from the Cretaceous period that they found, and their conclusion was that the DNA survived over millions of years. It didn't say it was a dinosaur anywhere, and the conclusion is that they were like, oh, yeah, it's so, a sort of mammal. So, yeah, at least, well, mammals probably ex existed at that time. Or, but it, 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 there's probably another explanation that I think is more likely. That can it be that this cycle from C is too much conserved in this patient and then it doesn't show any proper oh. differences? No. Okay. Uh, could maybe be a mistake? Maybe it actually happens to be human DNA? As an contamination Yeah, or a mouse or something like that, yeah. <laughs> Come on, of course, the closest relative to dinosaurs should be birds, it should be something. Because if you blast the sequence, it says human. Okay. I don't know where we are. This is, this is what it was human. I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, but the database you have is, is today you find thousands of hits of it and you find the human. I don't remember exactly what it was, but clearly it was, I mean, obvious, the closest relative should not be a, should not be a, a mammal. And it should be, if it should be something, it should be, a bird. I don't think people really believe, was so certain about that 20 years ago. Because clearly, I mean, this idea that birds are dinosaurs is, I don't know how established it was 20 years ago, but now it's quite, I think people agree on it, but I'm not really sure, I don't... Did mm. they assume that it was dinosaurs? Why did the dinosaur idea come from when they found this bone? They probably found a bone that was probably from from was creation uh, from the, the was old. Probably bone is correct, yeah. but it's just that during the handling of the it somehow most likely human DNA. That's, I mean, it was humans that handled it. Yeah. I mean, the people that picked it up the, from the ground, whatever. It's like so most likely they got human DNA from uh, some. Yeah, but of course, it could have been a mouse running around there also. But it, but monkeys are. Most likely, quite unlikely. Likely. So, I mean, this is exactly the problem that Sander Pepper has when he looks at Neanderthal DNA, which is so similar. So you can't really know if it's the same. Is it really from one of the people in the lab, or is it actually Neanderthal? Because it's 99.9% it's identical. So that's that's the. So they have extreme carefulness of things to do it and the methods. Then it's. I think they always sequence it twice in different places. I think like that. So there's always different. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so that's. Um, Did they publish your attraction? I think so. Uh, at least it was. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I haven't. I. They should have. And I'm, I think they did, but I'm not I'm not sure. Okay. Should we? Something else we should mention? We're